What's going on guys? My name is Mr. Hurricane, and I'm here with the Minnesota Vikings Men 12 Franchise Stats little recap video I wanted to make for you guys, and I just haven't gotten around to it until now, but in this video, I'm basically going to show you guys all the stats and how things wrapped up in the series. Obviously, it ended with a Vikings Super Bowl victory in the year 2016, I believe. This was the sixth year of the franchise, and uh, just people wanted to see the stats and how things are like in the future, and so... I have pulled up a few different like stats leaders, like I have the exact number for passing yards and whatnot and rushing yards, but I'll show you guys how things wrapped up overall in the season, the final season of the franchise, and then we'll look at career stats and hopefully some other stuff that is pretty cool. I haven't looked at this stuff yet, so it's all new to me as well, but uh, we finished the seasons 10-6, and 6, just like the first Super Bowl season in Season 2, and then went through the playoffs on the road and had to win against the 49ers, uh, the Falcons, Eagles, and then the Texans in the Super Bowl. You can see the Falcons and the Patriots were the two top teams in the league. Both only 12-4, and four, so no 13 win teams or anything, taking the one seed. Um, we'll look at some of the divisions, see who is winning in 2016, a little bit in the future for us. We got the Ravens on top of the AFC North, the Texans and Titans on top of the South, the Patriots and Jets at the East, Denver leading the West, and the North is the Detroit Lions and the Minnesota Vikings, and the South, the Falcons. The East is the Philadelphia Eagles, the West is the San Francisco 49ers. So let's look at some stats. How did it finish up for season stats? I think in like every year of the franchise, Adrian Peterson led the NFL in rushing yards. We'll see if he did in this year. Actually, I can't remember if he did in year five, because that was a pretty good year for other running backs in the series. But, uh... Very pedestrian numbers for Christian Ponder in Season 6. 18 touchdowns, 15 picks, only 3,200 yards. 56% completion percentage. Let's look at rushing. AP's got 1,363 yards. I, well, I don't know right now, but I can show you his career high that I've had in this series. We'll see what I was able to do with him. Um, this is a pretty good year, but after watching AP in real life go for 2,000, I'm not sure if 1,300 is really that good. Receiving, I... I know I play on lower like quarter length, so I'm not getting a full 120 plays a game. But there's a lot of uh, a lot of wide receiver distribution here. You don't see anybody really standing out. There's Fitz and Rudolph at the top, but still, Mark Harrison getting 42. And uh, I wanted to do some great things with Cassius Stevens, but he kept getting injured. Obviously, here were the ooh, look at this. The two rookies. Dylan Davis and Austin Saunders both gave up a ton of sacks. I thought they played pretty well during the season, to be honest. They passed block, I thought, pretty well. And on defense, Chad Greenway leads the team in tackles. We have 13 sacks for Eric Norwood, who had a great series, as left ends usually do, but he was phenomenal. Jamel Fleming had four picks. Greenway had three. Anybody else do anything cool? Forced fumbles. Jelani Jenkins, Christian Ballard, and Lewis Nix the third. I love the defensive drafting I did in this series. I thought, as far as my drafting was, I thought I was strongest at drafting for defense. And it was really cool to see some of these players turn into stars in the series. And this was my first big series, so... Oh, I should probably show you the season stats before we move on to career stuff. But who led the NFL in everything? I'm pretty sure I did not lead in rushing yards. Zach Mettenberger led in rating. I don't care what that stat. Landry Jones, 4,100 passing yards. 36 touchdowns. Who led in interceptions? Eli Manning and Jay Cutler. How about getting sacked? But yeah, Ponder got abused in this series, and that, that happens. You know, the sliders weren't perfect and everything, but they were fun. So that's all I really cared about. Marcus Lattimore leads in rushing yards. Oh, AP is not even in the top 10, it looks like. Yeah, it was an off year. Oh, well. Marcus Lattimore, 1,800 yards, 18 touchdowns for the Indianapolis Colts. Rex Burkhead's up there, Arian Foster. Ray Rice on the Dolphins. I don't think I remember that happening in this series. It was pretty cool to see guys change teams, though. Frank Gore's a Raider. That's so weird to see, but the thing is, like, when I did free agency, there were very rarely anybody in the 90 overalls on the free agent market. Those guys would get locked up for long contracts because it was so easy to re-sign them. They didn't ask for a lot of money, and so it wasn't hard. Basically, the only problem was whether you wanted the player or not. Money was no issue to any team in this series, really. Mercedes Lewis, look at this, though. 100 catches, 1,100 yards receiving as a tight end. Mike Williams leads in receiving yards. Calvin Johnson's there in second. Touchdowns, it's Calvin. How about yards after the catch? Mike Williams drops. Jacoby Ford and A.J. Green. Let's move on to, not blocking, defensive stats. Vaughn Miller leads in tackles. Oh, no, no, no. Solo tackles he led in. Total is Carlos Dansby, 
sacks is Genio Grism, who must be part of that draft class. He has to be one of the guys for Oklahoma in the game right now. We had 21 and a half. I think the record's 22 and a half. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. All right, I just looked it up, and yes, it is 22 and a half for Michael Strahan. Um, interceptions: Stephon Gilmore had six. Dre Kirkpatrick, Gerard Powers, Patrick Robinson. How about forced fumbles? Troy Polamalu still going strong. 13 years in, six forced fumbles. Kicking. Tyler Bittencourt. Who had the longest field goal? Sebastian. That's right. Punting. Yeah, we're gonna skip over that. Kick returns. Mark Tyler led in touchdowns and at punts it was Christine Michael. Well, that's the season stats on the year. Let's move on to career stuff. This is the stuff that I really wanted to see. And then we're going to go to records too. I mean, I want to dig into all of this cool stuff. And so let's look at the Vikings first. Especially because I want to show you guys how my draft picks ended up finishing up. But uh, we had Sidney Rice who only played one year, I think, in this franchise. Because he was on the Seahawks when the game began. Wow, these stats are kind of... Let me sort, make it all make sense. Mike Vick has 137, 136 touchdowns to 74 picks. That seems like a very good touchdown interception ratio for Vick. Ponder, 103. So every throw here with Christian Ponder was by me. All these stats are, this was Ponder's rookie year when this season, be, when the series began. So all this stuff, I threw 103 touchdown passes with Christian Ponder in this series. And you guys had to deal with 75 interceptions. <laughs> Oh, it doesn't show me how many times I got sacked with Ponder. That would have been hilarious. What was his best season? Can I check this from here? Yes, I can. Best season was 28-16, and 16, it looks like. That was year three of the Dynasty. So this was a Super Bowl season, and so was this. Man, I really did not do that well at quarterback. How did I do rushing with him? Uh, 331 yards rushing with Ponder in that year. 348. No rushing touchdowns. I never ran for a touchdown with Ponder. Are you kidding me? That is amazing. Adrian Peterson, and so the NFL career rushing leader is Emmett Smith with 18,355 yards, and on this list, or in my series, Adrian Peterson would be third with 16,119 behind Walter Payton still, but ahead of Barry Sanders. 138 touchdowns. I'm going to look up quick the stat guys for career rushing touchdowns. The most rushing touchdowns in a career is Emmett Smith with 164. AP has 138 in my series, which gives him third behind LaDainian Tomlinson and Emmett Smith. 41 fumbles. Still less than Michael Vick. Let's go to receiving. I didn't have very many players that I drafted in that category or started out with. Larry Fitzgerald gets 1,000 catches, and I'm pretty sure I... I don't remember if I said when Larry had 1,000 when it actually happened because I probably wasn't aware of it at the time, but with 14,151 receiving yards, that would put him in ninth or uh, actually 8th place behind Tony Gonzalez, Marvin Harrison, Tim Brown, Isaac Bruce, Randy Moss, Terrell Owens, and Jerry Rice. Receiving touchdowns, though, 112. That's a lot. Let's check out Rudolph. All of these stats were in the series, 15 touchdowns. That seems very low for six years with Rudolph as my top tight end. I think I had him... As my top 10 for five years. Jamez Logan had 160 catches, eight touchdowns, 2,500 yards. Mark Harrison had 122, so his stats really aren't too far behind Jamez Logan. He got a lot of playing time in this series. Uh, Christian Green only had five catches. And not much else there. Let's go to defense. Tackles. Chad Greenway has 1,190 sacks. Jared Allen, 113.5. Interceptions. I got 10 with Jamel Fleming, one of the key players in this entire series. Morris Claiborne had four. The interception numbers are extremely low. They are. But forced fumbles. Allen has 28. How about somebody that I drafted? Jelani Jenkins had six total fumble recoveries. That's Jared Allen again. Chagrin had five touchdowns, two with Jamel Fleming. Kicking. Sebastian, 419 made field goals, kick returns, Dexter McCluster. Let's look at the NFL career numbers now that we've seen the Vikings in this series, but I want to see if anybody ended up breaking records. The NFL career passing leaders, uh, Brett Favre is number one with 71,838 yards, and nobody is even close. Brady would have to play for like, um, I don't know how many more years, but he would have to keep playing for a while. He'd have to probably make it 20 years. Touchdowns. 
Uh, I forget Favre's record for that one too, but 414 and only 157 picks for him. Eli has 199, the most in the series, the most in the NFL at this point. After guys have retired and whatnot. AP leads in yards. Frank Gore's behind him in second in the series. Let's see touchdowns. Yep, it's all Adrian Peterson again. Fumbles. Tom Brady. Who's the top running back? Frank Gore. Receiving yards. Okay, Wes Welker leads in catches over Fitz. Johnson Witten. Where is Calvin? Calvin's way down here. I figured he'd be a little bit higher. And yards is Andre Johnson. And so Andre really isn't that far off. Number, uh, he actually isn't that high up. He, well, he is. He's number five on the list. But, yeah, Jerry Rice is 22,895. would be very tough to catch. Let's go to touchdowns. D. Hart. Now, this isn't an actual player. This is some sort of glitch or something because, you know, it says one year of experience, 153 touchdowns. I've seen this happen a few times. At receivers where I think it's pretty common. Let's go to defense. Sacks. Dwight Freeney has 150 and a half. Julius Peppers 147 now playing for the Seahawks. Let's go to picks. Asante Samuel with 60. Revis with 44. Troy Polamalu with 42. Dwight Freeney forced 46. Robert Mathis forced 41. Let's we'll see touchdowns. Troy Polamalu had six, along with Nick Collins, Prince of Mukamara, Dominique Rogers, Cromarty, and Asante Samuel. And I was up there with Chad Greenway. Had a lot of pick sixes with him. He was a good player in the series. But that wraps up the career stats. Let's go to records. Franchise stats records. Passing yards. Alright, so these are all like the... Oh, I could have looked at everything right here. I could have looked at all of it. Passing yards. So we see that Peyton Manning did eventually pass Brett Favre in passing yards. Okay, I should have been looking here the whole time, but Peyton passed them by a lot. Rush, uh, passing touchdowns. I should have been here the whole time. And Peyton did pass Brett Favre. Rushing touchdowns. We still have Emmett Smith. I got to third with Adrian Peterson. Rushing touchdowns. Third. Receptions. Chris Carter's five. Um, I helped Larry get to number nine. Receiving yards. Larry's number nine. Um, Andre Johnson's all the way up here. Receiving touchdowns. Yep, no one's catching Jerry Rice. Sacks. Bruce Smith with 200. John Randall with 137. I wasn't able to get up here with Jared Allen. If right ends were good in Madden, maybe, but nope. Paul Krause, number one in interceptions. Ed Reed is right there. He retired in 2014 in my series. Darren Sharper still going? Oh, I guess Sharper never retired in my series, huh? I found something else for us to look at, guys. Let's check out the Hall of Fame and see who went into Canton. We have James Harrison, Peyton Manning, Adrian Wilson, John Abraham, Ryan Longwell, Ed Reed, Champ Bailey, Donovan McNabb makes it, Brian Lacker, Tony Gonzalez, LaDainian Tomlinson, Charles Woodson, Rondé Barber, Ray Lewis, Jason Taylor. That's as far down as I can go. So that must be everybody that's made it in my series. These are all the Hall of Fame inductees. It's actually a pretty accurate list. I suppose there's a couple questionable names on here if you don't think McNabb's um, Hall of Fame worthy or if you don't agree with the kicker going, but uh, that's actually pretty good for the game. I had nobody from my team ever retire and go. I didn't have very many guys retire, really. I mean, Plaxico Burris was the big one. Season 2, win the Super Bowl, and then I think he was gone. But is there anything else I could show? I think that's about it, guys. It was an awesome series, though. It was definitely very fun. Weekly awards. Let's go to yearly rewards. Or, awards. So, Landry Jones is the NFL MVP. Marcus Lattimore was number three. Offensive player of the year is Landry Jones. Defensive player of the year is Genio Grissom. Offensive rookie of the year is Dylan Mahan, quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs. Don Fred Timbers. Defensive Rookie of the Year is DeJoshua Phillips, free safety from the Arizona Cardinals. Best quarterback, Landry Jones. Best halfback is Marcus Lattimore. Wide receiver is Calvin Johnson. Offensive lineman is Bobby Massey. Defensive lineman is Genio Grissom. Linebacker is Clay Matthews. Defensive back, Stephon Gilmore. Kicker, Sebastian Janikowski. And coach is Josh Moore. Derek Mason all the way down there, despite a Super Bowl winning season. Rivalry, history, team income. Who's making the most money in 2016? 
Uh, team income, we are above in TV contracts, but we're like below in everything else. Because we never moved out of the dome, probably. Team expenses, we are above in player salary and stadium costs. Even though we play in the dome, I must have done some renovating that I can't exactly remember. Damn, look at AP's contract. That's pretty big. What contract did I give Adrian Peterson? I remember one of the first things I did in this series was I extended Greenway and Adrian Peterson for long-term deals. So this was an $80 million contract. I think it was for like eight years or so. So it was like a $10 million a year contract for Adrian. Um, is there any way for me to see what it overall was? I think there is. If I go contract skills... Okay, so just his total salary and how much is left. Huge cap hit, but, you know, AP was worth it. Oh, you see, okay, you can see the breakdown here. He started off making 6.78 in 2011 all the way to 19 in 2017. And he's, he's gotten down a little bit to 93 overall, which reminds me now that I can actually look at some overall ratings for you guys. Yes, I didn't think about looking at overalls, but Christian Ponder finishes with an 87 overall. Adrian Peterson's down to 93. At wide receiver, Larry Fitzgerald's down to an 87. Jamez Logan's an 80. Mark Harrison's a 75. Kyle Rudolph is an 89. Nate Potter, 88. He was only an 88. I thought he was better than that, but... Um, Eric Norwood is a 75, but that left-hand position is just monstrous. Jared Allen's down to an 83. Phil Taylor, 86. Left outside linebacker, Leroy Reynolds, a 76. Greenway is an 84. Striplings a 78 at corner. Claiborne and Fleming 86, 85 respectively, although I always thought that Jamel Fleming played better in this series. Keystone Terry's a 95 overall safety, and DJ Green was a 77. But let's look at the overall NFL and see who the best players are. Best quarterback is Zach Mettenberger from LSU, followed by Andrew Luck, Tyler Bray, Landry Jones, Ryan Lindley. We'll see if any of this comes to be true. Halfback, Niall Davis is the best. Christine Michael, Marcus Lattimore, Mark Tyler, Mike Trumpy, Chris Johnson. Best fullback is Jeff Menken. Not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but he's a 99 overall fullback. He must be a beast. He's a fullback making a $45 million contract. <laughs> that is out of control. Who's paying a fullback all that money? Wide receiver. Oh, Larry's got the biggest contract of them all, but let's look at overall. Calvin Johnson's a 77 or a 97, still up there. Mike Williams a 97, A.J. Green 96, Des Bryant 95, and Devere Posey's a 94. Tight end, the best one is still Jason Witten. And then uh, Tyler Eifert is second. Philip Lutzenkirchen, I know Chris the Dog is going to like this one. Left tackle, Jake Long is the best at 98. Left guard, Carl Nix is a 98. Marquise Pouncey is a 99. David DeCastro is a 96. Alex Hurst is a 97 left end. Marcel Darius, 97 overall. Right end is Vince Brown, a 99. Haloti still a 98. Defensive tackle, Jarrell Worthy ended up being a 99 overall, and he was tough to play against two years or two times a year. Left outside linebacker, Clay Matthews, a 94. Not a lot of high rated left outside linebackers at all. Middle linebacker, Patrick Willis, still a 97. Luke Keekley is a 92. Right outside, Jarvis Jones is a 98. Adi Cole, I would love to see this come to be true. He's a player for the Vikings, in real life. Corner, Darrell Revis, 99. Dre Kirkpatrick, 98. Devin McCourty, 94. At free safety, Robert Lester is the only one better than Keystone Terry. Strong safety, Bakari Rambo is 97. Ray Ray Armstrong, 96. And Eric Berry is a 96. Robbie Gold's the best kicker. Best punter is still Shane Leckler. And so there you have it, guys. Here are all the 99s in the series. Revis, Menken, Mettenberger, Pouncey, Worthy, and Brown. And I think that's going to wrap it up, guys. I'm not sure how long this video is going to be, but I want to give you guys a good wrap-up here and show you how things finished off in the year 2016 in the Minnesota Vikings franchise. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought in the comments section. But thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later. Have a great day.